Our word is icon, which is spelled I-C-O-N. It's actually a Greek word, and the literal meaning of it is image. But in modern English, most people would associate icon with something on the computer screen, or maybe a very famous person or symbol, like a celebrity of some sort being an icon of a certain movement or a certain time and place. But there's a huge history behind the word icon, which is not very well known outside of Eastern Christianity. They are, in fact, religious images. It all goes back to the Christian origins in Judaism. The second commandment states that you shall not worship a graven image. And Jewish interpretation of that is to prohibit any imagery of divine things, God or angels or anything. But very early on in Christianity, one does begin to find religious imagery, and it's not really clear when or why or by whom it was first made. The Christians decided that Jesus Christ came down to earth and was made incarnate, and thereby God was in effect depicting himself. And so if God could depict himself, it must be okay for humans to make images of God. In classical Greek, the word icon simply means image without any religious connotations. And it only began to acquire religious connotations sometime in late antiquity. And in the early centuries of Christianity, it was a very unregulated area. It was not something that bishops and the church authorities were very concerned about. They were worried about other things at that point. They are not meant to be photographically realistic. They are meant to depict an idealized state and therefore they don't really conform to three-dimensional realism. Um, they're meant to show a heavenly realm, a higher realm. And so it's very important to make the distinction that people don't worship icons themselves, they use them as a vehicle to help prayer. Icons were very, as I said, unregulated in late antiquity, and there aren't very many that survived from the early centuries, but they were a lot freer in style and content than what you would see in an Orthodox church today. As you say, these are all fairly similar in style. Well, the reason for that is to do with Islam. In the 7th century, the Eastern Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire, was invaded by Arab armies for the first time. This new religion, Islam, was much more strict than Christianity about religious depictions. So in the aftermath of the Arab invasions, the emperors, the leadership began to cast around for an explanation. Why did this happen? Why is God unhappy with us? And one of the solutions, only one of them that they came up with was the fact that the Orthodox Church was using religious images, which would seem to be in violation of the second commandment. So there was something very akin to a puritanical reaction very similar to what happened after the Reformation, in fact began happening in the early 8th century in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, a series of emperors um, enacted legislation prohibiting icons, and this was known as iconoclasm. So the original iconoclasm is actually a political phenomenon from the 8th century, and there were lots of controversies, people didn't really like it very much. The emperors tried to impose it on people who were not happy with it, but it did last off and on until 843, when icons were restored and everyone was happy again. But after the restorations of icons, people began to pay more attention to them. They became a much more regulated area of Christianity and a lot of rules and regulations were applied. That's why they all kind of look the same, because there are some very strict rules about what you can and can't depict and how you are supposed to depict different people and events and divine beings. What you might notice, first of all, is that all of the saints and other holy beings, the mother of God, Mary, they're not very expressive. They don't smile. You'd think saints would be happy, you know, they're in heaven, it's great. Um, but they don't have any expression, even icons that depict martyrs being tortured to death. They don't particularly have a frown on their face or anything. And this is because, again, this is a heavenly image. This is an idealized divine image. And this calm expression is seen in Eastern Christianity as the ideal. You will sometimes get a bit of background. So this shows two saintly Russian princes, Boris and Gleb, 
on horseback and there's a bit of sort of landscape here. And that's fine, but really the focus remains on the saints. And this tiny one, this is a Russian prince who converted his country to Christianity in 988, Vladimir. He's holding a cross um, which shows his links with the apostles. He's considered equal to the apostles. A bishop, this is Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus, <laughs> but this is his orthodox image. And you can tell he's a bishop because he has this distinctive garment, the omophorion, with crosses. It symbolizes um, him as a shepherd of God's flock. He also holds a gospel book and his hand is covered because he's touching a holy object. Well, St. George is always a popular one. Again, this doesn't look so much like the St. George that an English audience might be familiar with. Um, he is slaying a dragon. He always has curly hair in Orthodox iconography. Well, since A43, uh, they've pretty much retained their same role. They can be found in every Orthodox church and usually lots and lots of them. Uh, as the centuries wore on and Eastern Christianity spread to the Slavs, they became very enthusiastic um, icon painters and venerators of icons. Um, when they acquired their own saints, they began to paint icons of these saints. And in a Russian, especially in Russian churches, you'll find an icon screen, the iconostasis, which separates the altar from the main body of the church where the congregation stands rather than sits. In the houses of Orthodox people, you'll often find an icon corner. In Russian, it's called a red corner, beautiful corner, where icons are placed, again, usually above the height of one's head with candles burning in front of them, and it's where the family gathers for prayer. Yeah, icons are different to the high Renaissance paintings of the crucifixion or you know, the, the birth of Christ that you might have seen. Um, icons are recognized in the Western churches mostly, but there is no real living tradition of painting them. And the famous religious paintings of the Renaissance and later, they're different in that they're not really meant to be used as prayer. Icons are not really art in that way. They are a religious object used in a service or in private prayer, whereas those kind of big oil paintings uh, really fulfill a different function.